Hi friends, this is Joe. This is the Decahedron RPG Podcast, and this is the first episode of OSR October for 2024. OSR October is, at least in my mind, um, this thing where a bunch of podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, whatever, all dedicate the month of October to pushing OSR content. OSR is the old school, there's some question about the R, revolution, <laughs> uh, restoration, <laughs> revival, renaissance, whatever. Um, but let's talk about playing the games the way they were played back in the day and the day changing from person to person, who's ever using the definition at the time. But I'm going to go all the way back. I'm going to go back to the earliest days of D&D and before. I am going to be looking this month at Dave Arneson's first fantasy campaign, which was published by Judges Guild. The copy I have says published in 1980, but the intro by Bob Bledsaw says 1977. So somewhere in there. I don't know if this is a reprint. It doesn't look like it. You know, normally they say copyright 1977, common 1980. So maybe it just took them that long to get it to press. I would believe that. Um, but this book, Dave Arneson talks about the stuff he did in the Blackboard campaign. And the Blackboard campaign is the immediate predecessor to Dungeons and Dragons. Dave Arneson was playing Blackmore and one of his players, mm-hmm. Dave McGarry, uh, made a board game based on it, the Game of Dungeon. You've seen it. <laughs> and they said, hey, this is kind of cool. So they brought it down to Lake Geneva to show it to Gygax. And while they were showing it to Gygax, he was like, whoa, hold on. What's, what's this other thing you're talking about, this Blackmore thing? So Dave Arneson ran him through a Blackmore adventure, and he was hooked. And he said, yeah, we've got to publish this. And that is where Dungeons & Dragons came from. So a lot of times when people do things like this for a podcast or a YouTube video or whatever. They do these deep dives and they take the book and they go page by page and they talk about what's on the page and all that. We're not going to do that. We're going to do a shallow dive. I'm just, you know, there's five Octobers. No, (laughs) there's only one October. There's five Wednesdays in October and this show comes out Wednesday. So I'm going to talk about just five different paragraphs I see throughout the book and talk about my feelings, my thoughts on that paragraph. So it's kind of a shallow dive into the book. And to go with that theme, this week I'm actually talking about shallow dives and deep dives for like dungeons. So yeah, that's the intro. Let's do it. So the book opens up with this paragraph. From the first excursions into the dark depths of Blackmore Castle's dungeon, it became apparent that these first hardy bands of adventurers would soon seek out new worlds to pillage. From the castle itself, the small town of Blackmore grew. Then the surrounding countryside became filled with new holes to explore, and beyond that, talk was already spreading about visiting the Egg of Coot. Each of these steps entailed a great deal of work upon the naive judge, who felt that there was already more than enough trouble available to satisfy any banded adventurers a phrase no doubt heard rather frequently since then in other areas. In general, a fairly loose procedure was set up for the establishment of each of these new areas, with a great deal of emphasis being placed on the players themselves setting up new dungeons, with my original Dungeon Master role evolving more into the job of coordinating the various operations that were underway at any given moment. That is the first paragraph from Dave Arneson's introduction to the book. And there's two things that strike me about that paragraph. The first one is uh, the game starts with a very bottoms-up uh, world design method. Uh, if you've read about world design for games before, you know, there's two main techniques. There's a the bottom-up where you start in the small area and you build out from there as the players move out. And then the other approach is top-down, where you map out the whole world and then you just zoom in uh, piece by piece until you have a fully developed world. In reality, like most things, those are the two extremes. Most people, I think, operate somewhere in the middle. I know I do. 
I come up with a very broad, this is what the world is, but then I zoom in on that area and I do that, which I consider really much more uh, bottoms up. The rest of that part is just what I need to support the bottom. So when we're in this village, but what kingdom is the village in, right? So I need some of the bigger picture information. Anyway, so the game starts with a bottom-up approach, which makes sense because he wasn't sitting down to make a role-playing game. He was sitting down to have some fun on a weekend, and it just grew and grew and grew. All right. The other thing, though, is the topic of this whole video, which is the deep dive in the shallow dive. That phrase that he gives about, I thought there was already enough adventure, strikes me as, as that old concept that people talk about all the time, the mega dungeon, right? You make that one dungeon with you know, like 13 levels or more, right? And it's enough to keep the players satisfied. There's more adventure in, for in campaign than you could ever want in that one dungeon. But he's talking about people already, pre-D&D, <laughs> are not wanting to go through this dungeon. They're wanting to go over and check out other dungeons. And they're wanting to set up their own dungeons, which is a different thing entirely. But, you know, even if, you know, Bob in my campaign sets up his own dungeon, the rest of us have to want to adventure there. And so I'm pretty sure what we're seeing here is, yeah, the different campaigns are setting up and he's trying to keep them all in the same game world. And they all have their different characters, right? So it's not like my character in... Bob's game is going to be the same character in Jim's game. You know, I'll have a different character in Jim's game. And now I'm just conjecturing here, right? Um, that felt not satisfying as saying, hey, let me take this character from there to there. And I think what we're seeing here is the evolving <laughs> situation to adventuring more like we saw it in the high era of D&D where, you know, we're seeing modules published. And so you have this adventure, but that adventure is set over here, and then there's another adventure set over there. But, of course, you want to take your same character with you. So it's just this one campaign of disconnected or loosely connected adventures uh, from place to place. And rather than any one of them being a very deep dive, there are the, all these little shallow dives that you're making into the dungeon to... To, to solve that dungeon, to finish that adventure, to go on to the next. Um, they say that variety is the spice of life, and I think that's what it is. People want a constantly changing background and backdrop and uh, thing. And we get this from media, right? Um, Hercules and Xena, that was their format, right? They travel from town to town, and they encounter new adventures. Every episode, I mean, sorry, every series of Star Trek, except for Deep Space Nine, is about going from planet to planet and running into trouble uh, that you find there. That's just the way we like storytelling, and our dungeons map that. So when a lot of people talk about the glory of the mega dungeon, I, I think um, I think they're looking at a past that didn't really exist, and, and that's that's a linguistic shortcut. Clearly, it existed, but the players, I even back then, didn't seem satisfied with it, and they wanted more. They wanted to go from place to place. So I think shallow dungeon, shallow dungeon dives, and uh, yeah, I just think that that is, has always been a thing, and it is part of the old school experience, even though we don't think of it that way. Just one final note before I wrap it up. I'm going to talk about this one thing that Gygax said on page 107 of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. And this doesn't negate Mega Dungeons or anything. It's just a method of adventuring, which I think is worth repeating. The title of the section is called Successful Adventures, and he spends a couple paragraphs saying, okay, you have this game coming up, and you want to survive it. This is what you need to do. And then he says, First, get in touch with all those who will be included in the adventure. Or if all are not available, at least talk to the better players so that you will be able to set an objective for the adventure. Whether the purpose is so simple as to discover a flight of stairs to the next lowest explored level, or so difficult as to find and destroy an altar to an alien god, some firm objective should be established and then adhered to by as strongly as possible. 
Note, however, that inflexibility or foolish stubbornness is often fatal. So here, Gygax is saying, even with a mega dungeon, don't go in the dungeon to solve the dungeon. Set your objective and do a shallow dive for that session uh, and come back out. And there is this computer game from back in the day <laughs> uh, called Telengard, which was pretty much somebody's version of Dungeons and Dragons trying to fight into Commodore 64. Actually, it was originally written for the Commodore Pet. Anyway, uh, it was one of the first games I had, and it was on cassette, and it took so long to load. I would, you know, put in the cassette, load, and I would go eat breakfast and come back and would just be finishing. But anyway, <laughs> a very deadly game, and you can get it for free, by the way, le legally legit online for PC, although you're going to need an old PC DOS emulator. They're easy to find. Anyway, um, but yeah, I've learned that in that game, that shallow trips are the way to go because you go down, you get the treasure, you come back up. You go back down, get the treasure, come back up. And uh, it's a good strategy and one that more players should adhere to. Players hate going back. I don't know what it is. I, anyway, that's a whole other topic for another day. Thanks for watching and or listening. Until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Tekihijin RPG Podcast. Please come back again to the Tekihijin RPG Podcast.